Um, what kind of questions did we come across on the homework? Or hey, question seven. I just want to take this to that. Seven. Okay. You said all of it or seven? All of seven. Okay. Well, let's take a look. I don't know what it is. All right. Number seven. Ooh. <laughs> Okay, so the this type of hut, I'm not going to try to pronounce that. I'm not a grammar specialist by any means. Uh, you have 600 square feet of material to build this hut. Since your materials are limiting factor, we must choose the radius of the hut, half a cylinder wisely, if our goal is to maximize the volume. Okay, so half a cylinder because it's... it's so basically, if you had a cylinder, it's this. And in order to find the surface area of a cylinder, it's 2 pi r squared plus pi r l, where l is the height, or that could be an h, I guess. Is that OK? But then we have to figure this out. So. So it's, since your materials are limited, we need must choose the radius of the hut as half the cylinder wisely. Our goal is to maximize the volume. Okay. So they have this hut. It's half this cylinder. And I'm, I don't know how I can draw this. I, no, I suck. Um, <laughs> that's what it looks like when it's straight on. But I don't think you're worried about the floor of the hut. Agree? Agree. I think you're just worried about the two ends, which are both half a circle, and the uh, the roof that's kind of a circle. Okay? So if we're doing just half a hut, so right now this surface area gets me the top and the bottom, and then the surface all the way around it. I think if I divide this whole thing by 2, which gives me pi r squared, plus pi r h divided by 2, I think that would get that particular picture. So that gets me the cylinder cut in half, in which we're just using this portion here. So you have a half a circle and a half a circle. So that would make sure that we have pi r squared. What? The cylinder looks like a can of beans. Yeah, it is. It's better than a hill of beans. All right, so is everyone okay that says pi r squared because I have a half circle on top and half circle on bottom? <coughs> okay, so, so pi r squared plus pi r l. Wow, that was a far deep cry. Okay. All right, since the materials are limited, our goal is to maximize the volume. Okay, so I know that the volume in this is going to be pi r squared height. And they're using L as the height, but I can use this. So our volume is actually going to be half of that. So pi r squared height over 2. This is what, because we have only half the cylinder laying down on the side. Okay, and then we, they tell us we have 600 square feet of material. Okay. My gosh, this is like the longest problem known to man. Since the formula for surface area is S equals pi r squared plus pi r L. I don't think we have the right surface area equation unless they were already divided by two. I think, hang on, let me think about this. Two pi r squared plus pi r h. I'm going to cut the surface area in half and divide by two so I get pi r squared plus 
pi r h. I don't think the equation they gave you on the homework is correct. I think you need to have this divided by 2. The reason I say that is this is the side of the can, but I'm only using half of it. So I think I have to have it divided by 2. So I think they, I think they gooped it up. So, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go 600. I'm going to use my equation, pi r squared plus pi r h over 2. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I know that volume equals pi r squared h over 2, because it's half the can. So what I want to do is I want to solve this equation for h, now that I know that I had 600 total. So I'm going to do this. 1,200 equals 2 pi r squared plus pi r h. So I multiplied all three terms by 2, so I got rid of a fraction. One hundred minus two pi r squared is equal to pi r h. Divide everything by that, so I'm going to get twelve hundred minus two pi r squared over pi r equals h. Yowzers! So that is our height equation. So now I can use that as my volume equation. So I'm going to plug this. This whole thing goes in for that h. So my volume in relation is going to be pi r squared times ay ay ay. Uh, let me go and skip the problem. That'd be good. I know I'm not going to give you one this hard on the test, but hey, I'm up for the challenge. Pi r all over two. All right, so I can eliminate that and that. I can eliminate that and that. So that's going to give me r over 2 times 1,200 minus 2 pi r. And if you graph that equation, it's going to be a third degree polynomial. It looks like this. Nope, it's going to be a third degree. It looks like this. So you're going to find that max right there is all you're doing. So plot it on the calculator. I'm pretty sure you know how to do it. The big, the hard thing on this is manipulating the equation. And I know that I won't give you a goofy equation like that. Let's move on. What other questions do we have? We're okay with six. Four. Use your graphing calculator, graph the function below, use the tools on our calc to get the requested information. Do you need me, do you know how to use the graphing calculator to get your zeros? Yeah. Let me load it. All right. <laughs> All right, clear, turn my plot off. Okay, um, three x to the third. Minus nine x plus one, did I write that right? Okay, so all I'm gonna do is let's just hit zoom nine. See if we can do it. Nope. Let's go zoom six. There we go. Looks like with a zoom standard, I can see all the information I want. So I can find each zero. So it's, this is the method part. Second trace, I want to find a zero. Let's find this first zero right here first. So I'm going to go. The most important thing when you're finding the zeros is this. I have a negative y value, agreed? Hit enter. When that becomes a positive y value, there's a sign change in between them. That means a zero has taken place. So my first zero is negative 1.79. My second zero, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to come over here. So I'm going to be above it, just because of how the path is. 
Make sure that's positive. Make sure you get a sign change. It's now negative. I have a sign change. So in between sign changes means A0 has to exist. So I get 0.11. And then if I find my third zero, so I can calculate zero. Again, I'm going to move this over. Okay, this is negative. If I'm finding the zero, I have to have a sign change. Now it's positive. So 1.67. Those are our zeros. Find me a local max. All right, so I want to find that max right there first. So, so I can calculate. I want a maximum value. Move your cursor to the left side of where you think the maximum is. Move it to the right side of where you think the maximum is. And at 1 comma 7, there's a local max. And then at a local min, go to a minimum. So on that side of it, go to the other side of it, come back up the hill. So it looks like at 1 comma negative 5, there's our local min. Where it is increasing, increasing would be here and increasing here. So it's increasing from negative infinity to one. It's increasing from one to infinity. Okay, again, you're talking about what's going on in the x direction, what the graph's doing. It's decreasing between negative one and positive one, because that's a decreasing part. And remember, increasing means if I pick two points along that increasing path, that would make our graph have a slope positive. If I pick two things on the decreasing, two points on decreasing, if I have the slope, then it would mean we have a negative slope. Cool? Yeah, Mr. Yeah. So on number five, five. Um, I can't like plug into the calculator, so I like did like the equation of minus this. And um, Here, I I'll. can't like get, it looks like it crosses zero. Okay, let's take a look. All right, so first thing I would do on this one is I'd make sure I have negative and then put this in parentheses. And then I'm going to have the x to the fourth. And plus 2x squared. So that's how I'd plug it into the calculator. We should be zoom fit for right now. Cool, we can see everything here. So that's definitely a bounce right there. Yeah, so you do a second calc and then zero. You're looking for a zero? Yeah, but like on the zero, zero, like it looks like cross. Like that's a. Ooh. That, okay, I see. So, are you able to find this zero? Yeah. And this zero, no, they're like the solid. The hard thing is, is when you realize that right there, if you were, you can't, you can't do a sign change. Because what the calculator does is between these two things, there's a sign change. That means it crossed the x-axis. This is bouncing off the x-axis. So, if it bounces off it, it doesn't come from positive. It never goes negative. It goes from positive to zero to positive. So you so that wouldn't even be like an x intercept. So I guess what you could do there is you could say, you know what, can I find a minimum there? Yeah. And if you find a minimum, you're gonna see that your y value is zero. That means that it's gonna be a zero. Yeah. Does that make sense? That's what I did. So I did like cool. I put I'll put the minimum in. Cool. Got zero, zero, but does that count as an x intercept too? Absolutely. That's a bounce. That's where you're getting a bounce from. Because it's a fourth degree polynomial, so you have two crossings, you definitely see, and you have one bounce. The bounce means it would happen there at least twice. So it's raised to the fourth power, so it should happen like that. So wise move, young man. Could you eat A plus for you for the next 16 weeks? Well done. Okay. 16 weeks. Wow. Cooper has an F minus for the next 36 weeks. So. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. Make sure your names are on that and hand that in as long, along with anything else you might need to hand in, please. I don't know. My birthday is at the end of the month in December, so, so I expect cupcakes. Oh, don't we have the same birthday? Are we December 30th? Oh, man. Dude, we should go, like, get ice cream or something. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Birthday pal. I knew I thought you were the coolest person I ever knew for a reason. I know. Well, she didn't tell me. I blocked her. She said you called her. She broke her. She left me a voicemail. It was like her just like. Homer. She like. She was like.
Yeah, I know. I saw it. This is gonna be a while. But I'm not gonna do this. No, just I don't like that. Yeah, I don't like that. Do you like that? Yeah, I'm doing it. 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 Watson, where are you going again? You already got up three times. I straight up told you. Okay, good. All right. Come back out to you as old homework. Grab yours, pass on the remainder. And then oh, coming done. up to you is today's notes. To me. I think it's not me. you will have a nice relief off today. This, I think what we're covering today, you'll be like, oh, oh this is good. Oh, yeah. I am in. I feel good about myself. Oh, no. I'm actually going to start eating again. I always eat. Someone I eat. We all eat. You're going to pass them back on there. Leave, I probably didn't put nothing there for you. I just keep pecking on you. I'm sorry. I know we don't have bullying. That's the way I have to bully these days. I just want to get a bunch of these and just keep passing I'm addicted to bullying. The, I'm too busy. Missing one over there. Missing one over there. In the they can pass like each one like person back. Oh, like he passes back. Like he passes back. Yeah, I know. That's Are you sure I mean. Ben didn't? A huge no, ben or no. just separate them all okay, from the stable? No, Mr. Shirk is passing back. He's passing all the way down. Leave. Did I get you? Yeah. Yay! Okay. One out of sixteen times ain't half bad. All right. Actually. I tell you, yeah, I'm not picking on Lee, but I'm gonna pick on Lee. Yeah, like, oh, oh, Everyone else good with notes? Oh wait, what are we doing? Yeah. 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 She's got some yeah. 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 Oh, so my legs are under. 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 My no. No, we want hard. I like crying myself to sleep every night. Hold on, I have 16. That's a good suit. Wait, so what letter are we on right now? E. e. There was two sections of D. There was one that was like C, D, and then D. Uh, cool? Okay, I'm pretty far behind. Think of my E. Yes, E. Good. All right. We are going to extend your previous adding, subtracting, and multiplying of... Algebraic expressions, yay. All right, but first, but first, let's talk about the end behavior of these. Okay, so if I were to graph this, we always want to start over here, agreed? So over here has got to be positive, okay? I don't know where it starts becoming positive, but I know that at the far right of this equation, it's going to go positive. So as x goes to infinity as they go this way the function at x also goes to infinity good if because this is raised to the fifth power that's by fifth degree polynomial if it was rising that way it has to fall this way agree so as i go this way i go to negative infinity okay so as f at x goes this way it rises as f at x goes this way it falls good let me modify this with one change of our problem. What would happen if I had this? What happens if that takes place? Yes, our end behavior changes. Our end behavior, if I had a negative here, I would need to make this a negative. I'm doing it in red for a reason, so you can see the difference. Okay? Does that make sense? Good? No. So like, what are you looking for? 
Just looking for the end behavior. Where is it going at the end? Where is the graph going to either end? So this, if I were to graph this, it's going to be a graph that kind of looks like this. Okay, there might be a lot more waves in it and stuff. But when I go this way to infinity, this is going to infinity is what that blue was. If I go this way, I'm going to negative infinity. If I change this, my graph, so if this changes to this kind of graph here with the negative, this graph will look like this. So it just flips the whole thing over. So as I go this way, as I go this way to infinity, this goes to negative infinity, so that's why that would have changed there. As I go this way to negative infinity, that goes to positive infinity. That's why I got a positive there. That's, it's, you're just talking about the end behavior. End behavior, you're not worried about bounces and wiggles and crosses. We're not worried about local mins and local maxes. We're just saying, hey, where's the end of our graph going? All right, this one. I have a negative this, so this is what my graph's going to look like. So both of those are going to go to negative infinity. Okay? Why is it open downward? Because my lead coefficient on my highest exponent is a negative number. If that was a positive 7, this flips over and goes up. And our end behavior changes. Is that okay? Good so far? That's the hardest thing we're doing all day. And we're done with it. All right. So when we add or subtract these, so if I were to add these, I'm just going to combine like terms. So are those like terms? And if they are, why are they like terms? They both, have the both, same same same. both have the same exponent, and they both have the same letter as well, right? Cool. So I'm going to combine those, and then I'm going to combine these, and then I'm going to combine that. OK, now, some people might say, where is this happening in the real world? OK? Any musicians in the room? Musician, musician, musician. Okay. Or who has listened to music before in the room? Good. So all of you have listened to music. So every note that is played on whatever instrument actually has some sort of wave function to it. Is that okay? There are certain waves that when you play them together, they sound really good. And this would be a chord. Okay? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. There are some waves that you play together and you're like, dude, that's the wrong sound, right? Oh, there are certain sounds that your ear, all of our ears will hear that is good. And there are certain sounds that you hear that you're like, that's wrong. I don't like it. Dissonance? Okay? So, cool. No. So everyone agree that there are certain there are certain notes you can play on the piano that are going to sound bad if you play them together. And that's because of the wave function of what it's doing. You actually have some sort of interference in there that your ear doesn't like to hear. So this could be like, and I'm just making this up. This isn't actual. But this could be like playing middle C on the piano, and this could be playing middle D. Middle D. You know, D sharp. Now some of you play piano going, it's not D sharp, it's just a D flat. You're right. Do you play piano? I do. Oh, aren't you in a band? Yeah! Woo! Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Let us come to one of your It's two. Yeah. Yeah. There's not a yeah. Yeah. You should sing C. So C, D has a sharp and a flat. Yeah. Because yeah, it's in between two black keys. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. You gotta come see it. Wait, uh, what band? I would just what, 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 what Bruins Brothers. Just give us like a 30-second time. Me? Yeah. I've been playing for like nine years. Oh, you suck. You're so bad. You're amazing. It's a hard time. I know. He has an A in here because he plays piano. He has to do nothing else other than I know he plays piano. He has an A. Yeah. What about you? You have to work your tail off just to get an F minus. So. All right. So. So. What about if I were subtracting these? What if I was subtracting? So do I have a like term to match up with that? No. Nope. So I just write, bring that straight down. Still with me? Yeah. And then this comes here, so I get a negative four x squared. Do you agree with that? Yes. There wasn't anything else. 
This has to come here, so that makes that actually a positive x. If I add a positive x to a negative 3x, I get negative 2x. And then this negative comes here, makes that actually a positive 12. I combine it with that 8, so I get a plus 20. Okay? Perfect. You are about to see it, right? All right, we good? <laughs> Anyone stuck? All right, what the what? Who? All right, moving on. All right, so then we can actually distribute. So this should be algebra 1, 6x squared minus 24x. Everyone should feel comfortable with that. We might know how to FOIL this. Some people might say, no, it's double distribute. And you're like, you're right. Uh, so I get x squared minus 18x plus 77. Everyone OK with that? Yes. And then we undo that by factoring it, yay. Um, this one actually comes out to 9x squared minus 16. That's a just difference of two squares. Oh, come on. Oh, dude. dude. I'm just trying to get the right notes. Come on, my dude. All right, and then this. This is going to go to x squared plus 18x plus 81. So that's a perfect square trinomial. Agree? Yeah. So those are all basic, general, here we go, no problems. Good? Yeah. All these pages showing up? Okay, so now we might multiply a binomial with a trinomial. Everyone happy with that? Yeah. All right, so I'm going to take this, and I'm going to get x to the third minus 3x squared minus 6x. Everyone still with me there? Yes. Then I'm going to distribute the 5, so I get plus 5x squared minus 15x minus 30. So then you have to look and say, okay, let's combine like terms. So I have x to the third by itself, because there's no other x to the thirds. But then I combine this one and this plus one, so I get plus 2x squared. And then I have this one and this one, so I get minus 21x, and then minus 30. Yeah. That's all? That's it. Yeah. Yeah. You're just distributing on steroids is all you're doing. Okay. okay. Like now, some cutesy teachers yeah. say, hey, we should line up the red and the blues in columns so they can see their like terms. No. <laughs> I'm not cutesy. I'm sorry. I look at it and say, hey, is there any other extra thirds? Uh-uh. Do we have any other x squared? Uh-huh. Combine them. Okay. So, I'm sorry. I'm not that good of a teacher. If you wanted the cutesy one, you could have had Mr. Mimac. <laughs> Mr. Mimac. I'm just kidding. He might not be cutesy. I'm just picking on him. May I move on? Yeah. Everyone happy? I mean, some students, like, one of my friends, Matthew, he just watches the Me? I'm wide away. Oh, okay. All right, so, so try these. See who can race me. You win. No, you didn't. Do we get extra credit? Sure. Sure. A hundred trillion. Actually, you don't have to take the final if you do this right. That's called sarcasm for those of you who haven't figured that out yet. Finally. Finally, sarcasm. No, or finally, an explanation that I have sarcasm in my class. I finished the second one too. Oh, wow. Man, anyone else you want to go to Thanksgiving? I want to. I am. Excited. You know who's not excited about Thanksgiving? The turkeys. Yeah. <laughs> Thanksgiving's not good I mean, what better holiday out there than just to binge, eat, be full, and watch football? I mean, God. That's what I'm yeah, saying. I'm going to be in Arizona. All right. We okay distributing here? Some of you are talking too much, and I know this is an easy concept, but your teacher gets confused easily, so hush. What part of Arizona are you from, Mr. Sterling? Tempe. I'm going to Sedona for. Sedona? You can go hang out with the hippies, huh? Well, I think it's Sedona. I got the message. That's an X right there. I can't. It get looks it. cool though. It does. Funny thing about Sedona is, many years ago, back in the '70s, they actually felt that uh, Sedona. Wait, I screwed up. Where's the X squared go? 
The answer is uh, 2x to the third, 5x squared. squared. I don't have any other x squared. Oh, I have the 2x squared. The, the no, minus that's an x. Yeah, you. Minus six, six x squared. There, we had those, right? Yeah. So that should be a minus. Ah, oh, man. Boy, I can't even do this. I'm thinking about Sedona and hippies. Wait till I teach the trach unit part of this class. What about Sedona though? It was junk land. Really? Yeah, it was thought as junk land. No one would want to buy property there. Now it's some of the most <laughs> prime real estate in the world. It's pretty there. Oh yeah. Well, people are like, oh, these red rocks are just toxic. <laughs> Many religious groups saying that's where Satan lives, and you're like, what? You the seventies was a, week, a wild part of your life. <laughs> you guys, you guys are lucky you didn't grow up in the seventies. Do you know where Gilbert is? I do. That's where my cousins. Grew up. Gilbert used to be all farms. Now it's a big old metropolis of houses. All right. What do you think we should do? What do you think? What do you think? Yes. So do I distribute three x here and here and I keep going? No. No. Because here. Minus 2x. So that gets distributed both of those, yes? And then here and here? Okay, like terms. Negative 2x squared. Yay! Anything else, like terms? Oh, we forgot this one. Negative x squared. We forgot that one. We have all those x squared. So what is it? Negative x squared plus Negative eight x squared what? Plus eight x minus two. Minus two done. Done. Dude, this stuff is totally easy. Yes. All right. Then uh, this is my last slide, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. If I were to say that's the difference of two squares, would you feel comfortable with knowing that? Yeah. Because x to the fourth is the same thing as x squared times x squared. Yes. Sixteen same thing as four times four. So eyes up here real quick. So I get this, and I get this. Now, this, this is the fun, but my teacher hates me kind of problem. Because you get to that point, and you're like, sweet, I'm done. And then you go and you come see your, take a look at your quiz later, and go, "Why? how did I miss this? Does anyone see the factor completely? Factor completely. What else needs to be factored? The square. Yeah, this right here. What is this? Square. Perfect square, so another difference of two squares. So I have x plus two, x minus two. And then and then the kids in algebra one, they all think you can factor this, but no, you can't because it's called the difference of two squares, not the sum of two squares. So this is the actual answer to this problem. Okay? And and it always sucks having I always hated when I got um Ben, is this all your homework that I need? Yeah. You just put it in here? And, and hope when I find it. <laughs> ben, ben, you just, you just be like Watson. Just walk by me nine times and like you know make googly eyes at me and walk by. I haven't got up like I know. I'm proud of you. All right. So again, that problem is the one that you see it on the test. You're like, sweet, I'm done. It's easy. Great. But realize, factor it completely. You have multiple. But not you. You have multiple diff uh, difference two squares. And then this one is a perfect square trinomial. This is going to be x squared minus 9 and x squared minus 1. And if you got there, you'd be like, sweet, I'm done. No, no x squared minus 9 is difference two squares. And x squared minus 1 is difference two squares. So I get x plus 3, x minus 3. And I get x plus 1, x minus 1. Done. Done. <laughs> Yay. Is so that it? Yeah. That's it? That's Dude, I finished like, is there something I forgot to tell you guys? A story. A story. All right. So now 6E, worksheet 6E is your assignment for tonight. And you all said it was okay that we have our quiz on Monday? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because I'd go crazy if I gave it to you guys on Friday because I'd have all tests all day and I'd be like bored. I'd probably just get a sub and then you guys would wind up just copying off each other. <laughs> we do that anyway. 
Oh, okay. Just want to make sure. We still have five minutes. Sit I, down. I know. What should we do for five minutes? Heads up, seven up, please. Heads up, seven up. Good.